irony of it is he's part time. He shoots more than most pros yeah. do. Like, like that's the that's the thing you have to realize. Like, and, and so I, you know, I don't want to give the misimpression. Like, oh yeah, you take a couple pictures, you might be a visionary. No, this is a man. I'm not kidding. His passion. If he doesn't, if he doesn't pick up a camera for a day or two. He's out of sorts. He's just out of sorts. This guy gets up insanely early in the morning, goes out and shoots. Comes home from work, goes out and shoots. Not to mention, he chases crazy weather and stuff yes. that uh, I, I like comfortable environments. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> we, we we like the studio and yeah, right, okay, exactly. let's bring that light down just a bit. Yeah. He's chasing tornadoes and exactly. So, but but that's you know that's what I appreciate about Olympus's program is that it's really about embracing photography. It's people that are passionate about their gear. And, and people that really can communicate, because communication is a big piece of it, and you understand that from an educational standpoint. You know, there are good teachers and bad teachers, but it all starts with passion. It simply starts with passion. And, you know, that's for a company to recognize it, I, I think it's outstanding because it projects an image to people that put in the hard work, put it, because let's face it, good photography is still hard work. It's not the camera that you buy. You put in the hard work, you know, you can do this. It's something, but you know, you've got to be willing to put the effort in. And these guys do. These guys, I want to be like them. I mean, it's great that I do what I do and I love it, but believe me, I, I would love to get to the point where I can shoot and produce the way they do. I just. That's awesome. Now, he brought on a really good point because I do like the idea, the Micro Four Thirds, he produced a billboard out of it. Again, do you remember the old days with HP printers? Oh my God, 300 DP, or DPI, 600 DPI, 1200 DPI. Wow, we're printing at 3000 DPI. <laughs> and after a while, it's like, wait a second, I don't get it. What's the di My 300 looks a little bit, or the 600 looks a little bit better than the, than the three. The 1200 looks like the 600. So to me, that whole crop sensor, more of a marketing ploy and stuff, but explain to us some. Like, what's your his camera right now? What are the megapixels roughly? So you're looking at 20 megapixels. Okay. Um, we also have the high res shot with a tripod that can do an 80 megapixel raw, wow. or the handheld high res, which is one of my favorite functions. Um, it's one that I didn't expect to love as much as I do, but I wind up shooting with it all the time now, um, and that's a 50 megapixel. So now, in, so the article I wrote: How many megapixels do you need to print an image? Okay. So I guess the question is: You're saying it's it's a how many megapixel again? Twenty. Okay. So twenty megapixels. So if you took a twenty megapixel camera here and then a full frame twenty megapixel, what what's the I mean, how are they comparing? As far as our number one, the resolution quality of our lenses. So the ability to resolve, gather fine detail, contrast, everything. Um, our lenses are renowned. Uh, the other thing is, is and it's interesting too, because the conversations of when the whole four thirds, not micro, when the whole four thirds thing and that four by three sensor hit, the whole idea of telecentricity, the light coming through the lens and then hitting the pixel well at the right angle so that you're not causing shadowing. Um, and you even called back that in your recent presentation because you said edge to edge sharpness and things like that. So. Um, the reality is, is our ability to gather fine detail and then render it properly. Um, I mean, we all are aware that you can grab a 20 megapixel cell phone size sensor and then compare the two and which is gonna be, we've been through the megapixel wars. We played that game. It didn't end well. Um, now we're in the sensor size wars. Um, we're just a different company. We're saying, no, what we're good at is making compact, is making small, making stuff that's actually usable the camera that you're going to use is the one that you have with you, um, and we can we can continue talking about the benefits of large sensors and other things. But there is a very large group of people um, that need camera gear that isn't going to kill them any longer, not going to hurt their back, and they can bring it with them everywhere. So. Now, now it's funny. I mean, think about this. We were well. I'm in Florida. And while this poor guy is shoveling snow, I'll text him from my hot tub yes. or my, or I'll text him from the pool. Hey, Joe, what are you up to? Let me guess. You're in the pool right now, aren't you? You're writing, aren't you? Yes, Joe, I'm sorry. Um, but sometimes, like, they'll say, hey, here we are. It's 90 degrees, but it feels like it's 95. So that's how I look at, honestly, when we're looking at a lot of these pictures, it's like, okay, I don't... I don't care, what, I can't guess what megapixel this is. I look at the image, that's a sharp looking image. Who cares what the megapixels are? If it looks phenomenal, 
That's all that matters. So, like you said, we're, we're done in the days. The megapixel wars are done. Stop comparing that. Um, the whole goal to look at is the quality. And, and like you said, you've always been known for the lenses. That's always been. I mean, that's that's been that, that's been it. Yep. Um, and you brought up a good point. And no, I'm I'm rounding that age. No, and I joked about you know uh, heaviness. Yes, but the, the, the cameras that I, that I carry are extremely heavy for sports. I'm used to it, yeah. but I do feel it in my back afterwards or my arms after a while. And then when I did pick up the first cam the first mirrorless, I felt like for me my hands are so big. It was, oh man, it feels like a little toy. It's one of those things you have to get used to, right. and decide whether or not it's worth it. So um, now. So here. I'm going to put you on the spot, and I'm going to take a chance. I know what you're used to. You haven't held well, one of these yet, have no, you? No, no, no. This I uh, haven't. I'll tell you why. So, because you have the battery grip on it. No, no, that's not the battery grip on it. This is a new one. This no, is the EM1X, saying. right? You, but this is built right in. But put it on your hand. Well, no, 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 no. Right. I agree. Okay. This feels right. like the real camera now. Exactly. Yeah, oh, I, I totally and, and agree. I, I will tell you, when I came to Olympus, obviously they didn't have this. They had the EM1 Mark II with the grip. Everybody flipped out when this camera was announced. Oh my God, it's gigantic! It's so big. It's it's barely it's barely bigger than the M1 Mark II with a grip. And the the only real ergonomic difference there's a small one and a big one. The small one, this grips a little deeper, which for somebody like you who's used to that bigger camera, it's a much nicer fit. But the real cool difference, and you're not going to find this in any other brand with their motor on it. Watch where my fingers are with the buttons, oh, yes, okay? Yes, yes, yes. When I go to vertical, exact same experience ergonomically. Everything is set up so that it mirrors completely. So from the standpoint, what do we all do as photographers? The more we learn our cameras, we learn the muscle memory, right? The muscle memory is exactly the same horizontal and vertical. And if you notice each of the buttons, it's a different tactile experience. So you quickly can tell what button you're on just by the way the button feels. Well, this, I do have to say, um, it's a buyer's market. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. for, for us, course, it's exactly. definitely a buyer's market because a there, there's so many options out there. And what that's forcing a lot of the manufacturers to do is come up with stuff like this yeah. and say, hey, all right, so this is what we're going to do. But guys, let's get back to photography. This is what we're doing with it. This is make how I look at this is a. I'm building a little dog house for my own dog. Okay, I have a hammer, I have a nail, I can do it. My neighbors like it. Now all 15 of them want a dog house. Well, now I'm going to go out and buy a nail gun. Now I have to buy something. So that's and I love how your system grows with you. So so right. So a, a beginner coming out, and they're just starting out. What camera would you recommend? Um, either EM10. Uh, the, either the EM10 series, or if they need the weather resistance, because they're you know people that are out in the elements, then EM5. And then they get into it for a while, and all of a sudden they want to upgrade. Yeah. Now they start upgrading right. to different levels, and the resale values on these are <laughs> really good. My, I'm not going to mention which. I almost said it. I'm not going to mention which PC computer I have for my laptop. Right. Um, but I, I, I'll just say it. I have a beautiful Surface. I love my Surface 4. I checked out the resale value. They wanted to give me 125 bucks for it, and I almost had a heart attack. Yep. And I was like, "No, I'd rather give this to my goddaughter or somebody yep. Yep. to play with," um, because the new one just came out. Right. But the cameras, I think, for us as photographers right now, right. we're in a great position. Sure. And what's even better is they're selling the camera, but they're selling the education that comes yeah. with it, right? And that, that's the whole, and, and what Joe is teaching, and I love the fact that you guys do this, what he's teaching can be applied to any type of cameras. Oh, absolutely. You know, but then after a while, you start to watch the stuff that he's doing, and there may be things that he does do with this camera that you could do with others, but it's going to be a little bit harder. You know, because that's your workflow. Exactly. Well, it's workflow and features. Like one of the things I'm doing here on stage is a feature that Olympus has called Live Composite, yeah, where it's allowing you to do basically um, as many time exposures as you want, all in the same frame, but it only adds new light, so it's an additive process. So the technique that I'm doing with it, it's kind of a hack that I'm making portrait backgrounds, but yeah, somebody with a Nikon or a Canon or a Sony, they could do it. The difference is they would do it with a, a time exposure or a bulb. They need to do it in the dark. but. The great part of it is, and again, I'm not trying to kiss up, 
I've never been told everything's got to be Olympus centric. I've been told teach, teach with your Olympus gear. So even a feature like that, I point out on stage, hey, if you're not a if you're not an Olympus user and you're sitting here, don't go away. You can use this at home. You're just going to do it with a bulb exposure. Sure. It's right. a different way of doing it. But again, so I, I do have to give you because you're the guy in charge uh, of finding these people, and I give you a lot of credit and thank you. Because again, there's a lot of stuff that we learn from uh, your visionaries and the stuff that you do from there. So awesome job, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. It's uh, it's quite an honor to be able to deal with uh, you know this group. They are very inspirational. Um, and it's also fun just watching it grow. Like the amount of people that are coming out of the woodwork now too, that maybe weren't receptive or weren't as interested, and they're like, I'm done. I, I need smaller, I need this, I like what you guys are doing. So, and it is really growing. But it's also growing because they're seeing the success of these people, they're seeing the results that they're getting. Uh, so the affirmation of the proof is coming through for the people that purposely, you know, maybe wouldn't give us the time of day, and now they're definitely looking at us, so. Well, hey guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. All right, well, hey, I'm Vanelli here in Las Vegas at WPPI. For the PhotoFocus team, thank you so much for watching.